Hi everybody. I just wanted to do a quick video on how to actually use the CCC grader, which is what is used for the Canadian computing competition. Um, so once you are registered and you log in, what you should see is something that looks like this, and you'll see a whole bunch of old contests. Um, so this is kind of like your practice area. If you want to go and try some practice questions, you can just pick any of these enters over here. Uh, if you intend on competing in the junior, then pick a junior. If a senior, pick a senior. And in general, um, you know, I would just recommend picking any of like the CCC 2020 junior. Go into here, and then the, there's the 2019 if you want more, and the 18. Um, the day one, day two stuff, I'm not actually sure what that is. You can try it and, you know, see what it's all about. But I generally stick to, to these ones. Actually, now that I look, sorry, the CCO these ones are the Can the Canadian Computing Olympiad, which is a different contest, and from what I understand, it's a little more advanced. So um, I would stay away from those and just focus on the ones that say CCC. Uh, so it, let's say I want to practice some questions from the CCC 2019 Junior. Then I go here, I click Enter, and I can see here that I've I've already tried some in the uh, I've tried this one in the past, so I can see there was a submission and. Uh, got perfect good for me and then the questions are here so let's say I wanted to go on and do the next one I would click here on time to decompress and it would tell me all about what I have to do in the problem um, and then once I'm ready to try coding a solution I just go to my favorite coding environment so for myself um, I would use um, editor you want to use so I bring up BlueJ and then for me I'm going to uh, up here I'm going to close the current project here and I'm going to make a new project I'm going to call it CCC 2019 Q2 Junior um, and then I hit enter so that makes the project here for me but what's important is actually the name of the class so when I'm making a solution I click here new class and then I have to call this name that absolutely has to be the case. So main, I hit OK, and now I can double click here. And for me in BlueJ, in my environment, I wipe out everything inside. And I'm just going to type, type public static void main. And for those of you who haven't seen this, this is just saying to the computer, this is the entry point to my code. So this right here is kind of like the skeleton of what you have to have. So you should have exactly what I have on the screen if you're doing it um, like I am in Java. And then in here is where I would type my code. So now I can start you know, doing whatever it is I need to do. I can import libraries up top, um, whatever I'm doing, blah, blah, blah. And I write a whole bunch of code and I come up with a solution. When I'm right, obviously this is not a solution, but I would continue and I'd keep going. Um, so when I hit compile, then the file is now ready. So if I want to try using the CCC grader, I go back to the web and then I click, uh, so I get off of the PDF there and I go, Sorry, it's got a little, there we go. Uh, so I go back here and uh, I can see down here there's a submit solution area. So what I do is I go and make sure that I'm talking about the right one. So I want to submit a solution for time to decompress. Uh, my language is Java. Some students do it in Python. Uh, these are all the different languages you can use. But for me, I'm, I'm doing it in Java. So now I choose the file. So I go and I find that folder. So for me, I've got... Um, a folder called BlueJ Projects and I just made a folder for what I'm doing here and I want to upload the Java file only. So I click open and then once I've got that main.java file I click submit and then you'll see it says compiling refresh the page to see updated results. I can see it, it shows me the, the code or the file that I uploaded to make sure that it's what I expected and if I reload the page You'll see it'll tell me, well, sometimes this takes a while, but I have to keep refreshing the page, and eventually, I hope, because I was hoping to make a quick video, um, but if I keep refreshing the page, eventually it will tell me 
uh, in this case that I'm wrong because I don't have a proper solution and then I can just go back make the appropriate changes and I can re-upload so um, you may have to take my word on this because it's not seeming to to do it but uh, I promise you that is what happens there we go uh, so you can see the compiler so I have no control over how fast the compiler goes but you can see here that status completed wrong answer wrong answer wrong answer so I would go back and I would fix my code and I would try to uh, come up with a solution so if that's all you needed you can stop watching the video at this point if you want to see kind of how to get input um, the problem in this case here is the sample input so this is what I can expect to get in from the user or sorry from the the program so um, basically here's the description of the problem you have to solve and here's some sample input so in this case what I have to do is write a program that's going to expect four lines of code, or sorry, four lines of input, one, two, three, four. Uh, and then I'm going to write a program that's going to print out nine plus signs, three minus signs, 12 capital A's, and two X's. Now this is just sample input. So I've got to be able to read all of this input and react accordingly. So the rest of this video is going to be me solving this so you don't have to watch um, the rest of this whole thing. So I'll go back to BlueJay and I'll keep that sample input kind of in the background. And what I'm going to do in my code is I'm going to write some code that actually reads in um, what the person or what, what the input's going to be. So I want to read that top line. So I'm going to make an integer called um, numLines and I'm going to write code that's going to use the scanner. Oh, I haven't made my scanner yet. I'm going to make a scanner called S and I'm going to use the next line to read the line. So just doing this uh, type scanner S equals new scanner uh, system dot in. So what that means is I'm going to make a scanner object that's going to accept input from the system. And so it's going to take this input essentially. And I want to read that first integer, but s dot next line will read a string. So I don't want to read a string. So what I need to do is wrap this in an integer. So I'm using the integer wrapper class to parse the int or the string into it. So I'm converting a string to an integer essentially. So that's going to read the four. Now, the next four lines in this case um, are all the same. It's a number and then some sort of character that I'm going to read, but I want to get that input. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to have a for loop. I'm going to write a loop that goes, um, in this case, four times. So this number here, the number that I just read, numlines, tells me how many times I have to run my loop. So I'm going to do this kind of thing. And each time through the loop, what I want to do is I want to take that input. So I'm going to use the split function here. So I'm going to read the line using next line. I'm going to split each one based on a space because I can see there's a space between each one. Okay. And that's going to wind up giving me a, a string array. And I'll just call it info. So the first time through the loop, it's going to read nine and the plus sign. So in the zeroth spot of info, I'll have my number. So I'm going to get that number. Um, so the number, I guess I'll make an integer called int. Um, repeat num is going to be integer dot parse int info bracket zero. So I'm going to convert the nine to an integer and that's how many times I'm going to repeat and essentially I'm going to build a string of all these pluses so let's try that so I'm going to do another loop here loop inside a loop so for int x equals 0 x less than repeat num x plus plus and what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a blank string to start so I'll do that first. So I'll make a blank string of string s equals absolutely nothing. Oh, I used or used s, can't use s. Uh, my string. And in here, 
And I already, I already used x, didn't I? So I gotta use y. So um, I'm gonna say I want s, or sorry, I want my string, which is empty, to basically keep adding to itself. So keep concatenating on to the end whatever we read into info one, like so. Okay, um, and so that's gonna that's gonna uh, repeat num times. So nine times, we're going to just add on to my string, and then we want to uh, spit out my. We want to make you know, we want to output that to the the screen is what I'm trying to say here. So I'm gonna do a system dot line of my string at the very end, and then since we're gonna do it again. Actually, I don't need to wipe out my string because I'm doing that right there. So I think that might be it. And of course, I'm live coding right now, so I'm sure something will be off, but let's give it a shot. So we're going to try to upload this to uh, the compiler. So I compile it, and then I'm going to go back to the coding site. Here we are. And this is where I submitted my old one. So I'm going to go back, and now I'm actually going to choose the file again which is the same one. So I'll choose it again, open, and now I'm going to submit it. And you can see here the content has changed. And I'll wait a minute and I'll see how I did. Oh, look at that. So correct, 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 and correct, correct. And the reason I had to refresh it twice there is that the compiler just wasn't quite done taking a look at everything. So now you can see that my solution was correct. Uh, it did everything the way it was supposed to, and that's awesome. So I'm done, and I got a perfect score. The other thing I could have done there, by the way, which I didn't, is I could have just run this locally. And what I mean by that is I could have gone into BlueJ, and I could have said, okay, let's run this, and I run it, and then it's waiting for input, but down here I can just type in exactly what was in the sample input. So I just move this over, and I kind of remind myself what was in the sample input, which I have to go back to get. I thought maybe I didn't. There it is. So there's my sample input. So in BlueJ, let's see what happens when we put that into our sample input. So I'll put a four, enter, and then nine space plus, enter, three space minus, enter, 12 space capital A, enter, and then two space X. And I already know it works. So you can see here that it is spitting out all the stuff and the rest is input that I'm just putting in. So I already see that it is printing out the nine pluses, it's printing out the three minuses, printing out the bunch of A's and printing out the X's. So there you go. So when you're writing this code, um, I highly recommend that you write the code test it locally using the sample input and then once you're ready you can upload it to the CCC grader. You can upload it to the CCC grader as many times as you want, there's no limit um, and that's pretty much how you practice and you move on to the next one. So I hope that helped and if you have any questions you all know where to find me.